Hey everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur, and we have a breaking story. This just hit a few minutes ago, and I'll be darned if I'm gonna let Uberman beat me to another big scoop like this one. I I say that in jest, of course. It's not really a competition, right? Anyway, in all seriousness, uh, this is really bad. This is really bad. Wall Street Journal uploaded an article called Uber Breach and Response Draw Global Government Scrutiny. And I know people don't like it when I read the whole articles, but because of the severity of the situation, I will link to it below, but I'm also going to read it um, word for word. In about three to four minutes, we should be done, and then I will, of course, share my thoughts on it. Government officials worldwide say they would take a look at Uber Technology Inc.'s handling of a major data breach last year. Uber said Tuesday that it paid hackers $100,000 in effort to conceal a data breach that affected 57 million accounts. In addition to the names, emails, and phone numbers of riders, about 600,000 U.S. driver's license numbers were accessed, Uber said. A Federal Trade Commission spokesman said the agency is closely evaluating the serious issues raised while Senator Richard Blumenthal... Uh, Democrat Connecticut said on Twitter that the Senate Commerce Committee should hold a hearing to demand Uber explain their outrageous breach and inexplicable delay in informing its consumers to drivers. And I'm just going to pause for a moment before I forget the inexpl the explanation for the outrageous brief and the inexplicable delay in informing the consumers and drivers have everything to do with Travis Kalanick, frankly, not giving a damn. So... Moving on with the article. San Francisco-based Uber said it would notify owners of the affected accounts in coming days. It fired chief security officer and a deputy for their role in the breach and covering it up. And chief executive Dara Kay apologized. At least three European government agencies are looking into Uber's handling of the breach and the New York State Attorney General's office has opened an investigation. Uber said in a statement that we've been in touch with several state attorney general offices and the FTC to discuss the issue and we stand ready to cooperate with them going forward. New Mexico's Attorney General sent a letter to Uber that the company's reaction to the breach was gravely concerning and requested that the company provide more information within 10 days. Uber hasn't disclosed a geographic breakdown of the compromised accounts. Uber said Wednesday it was in the process of notifying regulatory and government authorities about the breach. Quote, we expect to have ongoing discussions with them, an Uber spokesman said. Until we complete that process, we aren't in a position to get into any more details. The FT Unquote. The FTC has the authority to examine Uber's cybersecurity efforts and its response to the breach, including any communication or lack, therefore, with the public. The communication has undertaken at least pre uh Preliminary investigations and sometimes very detailed probes of this nature during past large-scale hacks, looking at whether a hacked company had reasonable data protection practices in place that were in line with industry best practices. The FTC also has examined how companies have responded to any known security weaknesses before a breach took place. The FTC has pursued enforcement actions when it believed companies weren't vigilant in following appropriate safeguards. In September, the FTC said it was investigating a breach at Equifax, Inc. Britain's Information Commissioner's Office, which oversees data protection in the country, said it would assess how the breach affected people in the UK and what steps Uber would need to take to better comply with data protection requirements. The office has the power to fine Uber up to £500,000, which is $665,000 in American dollars, for any wrongdoing. Quote, deliberately concealing breaches from regulators and citizens could attract higher fines for companies, said James Dipple Johnson, the British agency's deputy commissioner, in a statement. In addition to Britain, where Uber also faces a separate legal challenge over driver's compensation and a potential ban on operating in London, Italian and Dutch authorities said they also planned to evaluate how Uber handled the data breach. Quote, we are dismayed by the poor transparency shown towards users which we intend to investigate, said Antonio Soro, the Italian Data Protection Authority's president, in a statement. A spokesperson for the Data Protection Agency in the Netherlands, where Uber bases its European operations, 
said the agency would examine the reports of the data breach. Most EU member authorities don't currently have the power to impose fines on companies in the case of personal data breaches. This will change under a new regulation taking effect in May 2018. So on a side note, for the, some of those um, EU locations, Uber may dodge a bullet on this one. Just because. Oh, shoot. Um, the National Privacy Commission of the Philippines said it has summoned Uber to a November 23rd meeting to discuss the incident and to comply with the formal breach notification procedure under the Data Privacy Act of 2012. The cover-up is another challenge for Uber, which is valued at $68 billion. <laughs> I highly doubt that at the moment. Dara has tried to bring stability after a year of controversies that took place under CEO Travis Kalanick. Dara has inherited several federal probes of the company over programs targeting rivals and regulators, as well as a possible violation of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Uber is in a heated legal battle with Google parent Alphabet Inc., which filed suit in February alleging the company stole trade secrets related to self-driving cars and is trying to recover from claims by former female engineer that management ignored complaints from her and other women of sexism and harassment. The company has said it is cooperating with federal regulators in their investigation. It disputes the allegations made by the alphabet and is contesting the lawsuit. So, whew, okay, I know that wasn't super fun, but we are now at 6 minutes and 40 seconds, if my timer is correct. And here's the thing you need to understand. That is almost 5 minutes of me reading an article where the constant story is this country is against Uber and this country is looking into Uber and this attorney general has a problem with Uber. And by the way, they're also dealing with these lawsuits and these problems and these legal things. Um, I'm wondering to a certain extent, is this the beginning of the end for Uber? I, I mean, it seems strange because Uber's gone through so many controversies that, you know, you start to, you start to wonder like, are they immune to them? And yet this one... This is the one that seems to have almost united the world together where governments and attorney generals and lawyers and the public and the drivers are all universally in agreement like, hey, this was not cool and what's your excuse? And you know what? Here's the thing. I I need to like talk about the VMA yesterday though because I've already gotten comments on it and I did something super immature, and I even said while I was doing it, uh, I looked up on my phone, and I showed a picture of the current CEO, and I looked at the camera, and I said, Dara, you suck. And I have to, of course, I have to stress that, yes, he inherited a bad company, or at least a bad functioning company. The idea of the company is good. The execution is bad. To have a more fair comparison, we have tons of video game companies and they all do this and that. While, but most would agree like a company like, say, Ubisoft is a good company. Whereas a company like EA, they're a bad company. But they do essentially the same thing. So Uber is a bad company because of the way it has been run and the CEO, the new one anyway, has been charged to clean it up. And the only reason we know about this is because, admittingly, he came forward with that information. So that maybe wasn't entirely fair, but my frustration steams from the fact that it did happen. It took over a year. Who knows if my information is out there? And, of course, he's still not addressing the drivers, even though he fully acknowledges where the customers and yet the company is still so focused on the riders, even though they're not the customers. We're the customers. That'd be like if McDonald's was like ignoring all the complaints from the customers about the quality of the food and focusing on the people who maintain the lights. It's not as important. It just isn't. So I admit I am frustrated with this new guy because I wish I felt like he was on my side a little bit more. And I... And I sometimes feel like he is, and then there's other days I just don't, and yesterday was a day I definitely felt like he was not. But it does need to be said, he was the one who notified us of all this. And I know he did it, and he knew he was going to get a lot of stuff thrown his way, and 
now Uber could very, very, really, in a real sense, pay the price. I mean, a few possible things that could happen for starters: um, the tech, the license being pulled from London. That's probably gone. That is probably off the table. Uber is probably not getting that back because I mean, not because now London has two issues. They have to deal with, you know, Uber not wanting to pay their their drivers much and a data breach. That is a deadly one-two punch. Where if I if it was London, I could just see them go like, okay, you're done. You're done. Get out. Get out. Go to Russia if you want to, but get out of the UK. And I know that like Belgium, for example, um, I think they've kicked Uber out. Is it? Is it Belgium? Hmm. Uh, no, El Sal. No, I'm sorry. It's El Salvador. They kicked Uber out. Uh, you have at least a few states in America um, that, hey, you know what? This isn't good. And you know what? They're going to be contacting Uber to come to Congress to testify. There is just so much that's going to be wrong. And here's the thing. Even if this isn't the thing that brings Uber down, if there is just one more misstep while this is going on, then I don't see how they survive it. I don't see how they survive it. And, you know, the funny thing is it's probably going to be really big because one of the things that the um, that the story keeps kind of forgetting, and I was going to mention it in yesterday's video and I forgot, and I'm going to touch on it briefly before I make a full video for it on Saturday, Uber might actually do Amazon a bit of damage because the reason the hackers got the information is because Uber stored it on the Amazon cloud. And what's interesting is I have a buddy named Zach who believes in the cloud. He believes in technology. And he said, you know, clouds don't get hacked. And I said, not yet. But when they do, it's going to be a big deal. I don't know if this is the first cloud that's been hacked. But the cloud has officially been hacked. Your information is no longer guaranteed to be safe on the cloud. And... It came from an Amazon-powered cloud service, and Uber was the one controlling it. Wow. I'm waiting for that story to blow up, personally. Especially since, um, hey, you know what? If Uber gets to go down and they get to take a little piece of Amazon with them, that's great. That's I, I hate Amazon so much. I just... I hate that company. So... The bottom line is this is so not good. We're going to be dealing with this quite a bit. But I'm going to say this much. If news breaks tomorrow of any progression for the story, I'm going to talk about it Friday. I might upload a video tomorrow, but it's going to be like a happy Thanksgiving video. It's not going to be a news story unless it's just that serious of a news story. But yeah. We might be seeing the beginning of the end for Uber. You never know. So, uh... <sighs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a week. What a week. But now I have to ask you guys, what do you folks think of this? Do you think Uber's in trouble? Do you think they're going to get out of this? What do you think is going to happen? And will you use Uber either as a driver or a rider in the near future? I would love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy the videos, may consider becoming a Patreon member. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. I am so glad I drove Lyft today.